Welcome back to Closing Trades. Uh, percent and 1.2% lower for the Nifty. The mid caps and the small caps are in the red as well. A couple of stocks which are holding out are the fertilizer stocks, the likes of a National, Chumbal or an RCF, the pure urea players. Uh, well, the meeting on August 5th is about the de possible decontrol for urea. Not that it would happen because we heard of countless such meetings, but the stocks are pricing in some positives. So on the losing side, of course, the telecom stocks have crumbled, sugar has crumbled, and some of the auto component companies and the infrastructure boys haven't had a good day either. IBRCL is sub 60 now, 57 rupees. PTC is sub uh, 75, 73 odd. And Bharat Forge is now below 300, 5% lower, 299 is where Bharat Forge is trading. So a lot of these stocks have had some deep caches in today's trade. All right, let's get in a fundamental voice as well on the show. Rajneesh Kumar, Executive VP at Fullerton Securities and Wealth Advisors, joins us now with his sense of the fundamentals of the market. Rajneesh, I thanks so much for joining in. What do you make of uh, the deep caches that we've seen over the last couple of days, at least in some of the rate sensitives in general, and banking in particular? They were kind of holding out. The last two or three days haven't been too, too good for the banking lot. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Neeraj, absolutely. You know, I think with uh, the worsening global uh, situation, with the kind of global uh, news coming all of, from all over, uh, probably the sentiment has become a lot more negative over the last few days uh, than uh, what we had seen earlier. And uh, in a way also I think it's a realization that probably as the economy slows down, the uh, ability of uh, either retail customers to take loans would go down and also the, for the corporates uh, to uh, invest further will probably go down. And I think uh, that's seeing a lot of uh, re-rating sort of happening uh, in banking stocks in a way. So, uh, of course, you know, uh, banking stocks have suffered over the last um, uh, couple of sessions. However, uh, you know, if you uh, uh, look at our view, we feel that uh, the private banks, uh, the, especially the bigger ones, uh, should actually tide over much better and uh, probably this kind of a dip uh, also gives you a good buying opportunity but honestly they have also not corrected too sharply mm. is the tactical call on uh, telecom changing right now rajinish uh, is that uh, a pocket that investors are looking at accumulating in right now post uh, the tariff hikes Yeah, see, I think, uh, you know, uh, telecom has uh, reacted quickly to two uh, set of news, one positive, one negative, and what we are, uh, what we are seeing right now is probably uh, a bit of a, a knee-jerk reaction to the fact that, you know, there could be some policy changes which will be inimical to uh, the existing uh, telecom players. Uh, I would think uh, this probably is more of a temporary phase. Probably we'll see, uh, we see this as a good buying opportunity and uh, this is probably presents a, a good opportunity, you know, this dip. It should uh, revert back uh, uh, to a slightly higher level is what our uh, thinking is. Okay. Uh, stay on, gentlemen. Let's just get in a quick word from our commodities and currencies editor, Manisha Gupta, to speak specifically about what's happening to the sugar pack because these stocks are down and out in today's trade, and I believe uh, that uh, the prices of sugar have come off a bit as well. Manisha, what's really happened? Because I believe global sugar prices are off uh, from their highs, but what are, what are people in the market saying? Could there be more downsides to the price of the commodity? I think we have seen most of the reaction coming to the prices already, Neeraj. The international prices, which were trading at a 30-year highs in the last week itself, have seen a bit of a tapering off, some profit-taking coming in there. Increase in output from Brazil is one factor there. But then again, the global stocks are on the lower side. There have been these port congestion and harvest problems in Brazil. So all of that is a supportive factor. But then you saw sugar prices globally go up by nearly 23% in the month of July, and August has started on a profit-taking note here. In India, apart from the international queue, coming in here. It also has to do with the quota for the month of August, which is much higher than what the markets were expecting. This, of course, is a festive season. The weddings also kick up in this month, but the quota is much higher than what the markets were expecting at 19.25 lakh tons, and that really has brought the prices on the lower side. Just last week and before that, we were trading at higher prices, 2,700 rupees per quintal, but today the noted prices are around 2,490, and that really is a decline of 150 rupees in last four days itself, and that has uh, impacted the on-year stock prices as well. The quota also is inclusive of 2 lakh tons. Markets were expecting 1.8, but 2.25 also is a higher level in sense of levy quota coming in from companies, and that also is putting pressure. But I spoke to some traders and mills in the market, and they expect the prices to consolidate at these current levels because the festive demand has started coming into the markets at these lower prices. So just around these levels is where you might see some consolidation. Thanks a lot for that, Manisha. So that's the word really on sugar as a commodity. Rajneesh, uh, 
you know, our technical experts say that there could be more downsides to the sugar stocks, but fundamentally, because of the correction that has come into the prices, the stocks have gone off quite a bit. What do you, what do you think uh, uh, one should do with the sugar stocks? Stay out of them or selectively get into a few of them? Yeah, uh, Neeraj, we've been uh, negative on uh, uh, sugar stocks for some time now, and uh, we continue to be negative because we feel that sugar prices are, you know, it's very strongly linked to sugar prices, and while uh, when you look at replacement cost, uh, you know, the pricing uh, of companies do look attractive, uh, but we would stay away from it for some more time. I think uh, uh, it's still some, some way away when we would start recommending buying uh, sugar stock. Mm. Rajneesh, uh, you know, in all this talk about the Lokayukta report, its impact on mining and steel companies, uh, what's, uh, what's your own understanding of the situation and how would you approach the commodities universe then? See, if you, uh, sorry, could you repeat your question? I didn't get a question actually. Sorry. What is what is the outlook for steel companies and mining companies in, in lieu of the Lokayukta report? Uh, okay. See, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the whole uh, regulatory overhang seems uh, quite heavy, you know, because there a lot of uh, companies seem to be getting indicted uh, in this whole uh, CAG report. And we have seen, uh, uh, for example, the whole Jindal group uh, set of companies, uh, you know, uh, the prices going down. Uh, but you also need to relate it to the fact that, uh, you know, overall commodity prices globally is likely to go down and that's not going to be good for typically mining companies. So our outlook in general, you know, even if you look at, if, even if you for a moment uh, ignore the CAG report, has not been very positive on commodities, uh, commodity stocks uh, going forward. And with this whole CAG overhang, I think, uh, you know, it just worsens. So. We are not very positive on commodity and mining stocks in general right now. Uh, and of course, you know, as I said, it worsens uh, with the CAG report. So the companies which are sort of involved or sort of accused uh, is something that we would anyways probably not uh, advise uh, investors to get into right now. Mm. Oh, what's the sense as far as uh, the fertilizer stocks are concerned, Rajneesh? I mean, how, are you, how would you be approaching them um, in lieu of a potential urea price hike, which you know, really does not have a date set for itself. Uh, it's impending, but has its impact on fertilizer stocks. Would you take a tactical call on the sector? Yeah, I would because, uh, you know, one, of course, uh, if this urea thing happens, then it's, it's a huge upside for the companies. But even apart from that, uh, you know, it's a sector which has, which you think will uh, do well to some extent because uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, uh, the agri, the, the agri product uh, prices is, uh, continues to be high and, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, so that's something which will, which is good for uh, the sector overall. So while, uh, you know, uh, without this, we would have probably been uh, a bit neutral to overweight on this sector. Uh, but with this, uh, I think it, it does look positive. It's worth the bet. Some of the broader market names uh, that are showing some traction on both volume and price uh, are uh, the likes of a Castrol, which is up almost about 4.5%, uh, almost uh, 14 lakh shares done on that one. There's also uh, a Container Corp, which has done okay for itself. Uh, Pipa Vav Chipyard, not so much in terms of price uh, action, but volume pickup has been uh, fairly decent on these counters. Any one of these stocks that you like or recommend right now, Sudarshan? appears to be you know in the middle of an uptrend which tells us that the ch chances are that it could actually go and cross 700 since it's trading at 563 now that's a very impressive possible upside so this is a stock this map but i don't know whether you can actually day trade in castron you really want to buy it hold it for a few months and then expect a very good gain hmm. ashuni from um, the auto ancillary stroke tire space this is uh, one that you would also perhaps bet on three and a half percent higher in the session Castrol? You know, Castrol, the story really is that it uses, I think, uh, crude oil as a raw material. And each time crude goes down, Castrol tends to move higher. So basically, it went up to 575, now it's down to about 520. Odd. So again, in an uptrend, you could easily see uh, Castrol crossing levels of 630, 35. 
uh, again uh, you know longer than uh, you have larger uh, targets on cash stall if you know global ec uh, economy goes weak in 2008 everything fell crude fell but cash stall was one of, one of the big outperformers in the indian market so yes levels of uh, you know 700 750 not unlikely hmm. Okay, uh, pull up. Uh, we've discussed the telecom stocks. I just saw TTM, which is down close to six percent. Pull up an idea as well and show you what that one is doing in trade because that one was amongst the ones which had risen up quite a bit. Idea Cellular is down three and a half percent. Remember, first uh, uh, yesterday there was some stake increase, of course, in Idea Cellular as well, and the stock went up close to four percent. So that one was doing very well. Has deep. Uh, Peter down a bit in trade today in the small cap space as well. Before we take that break, a few stocks which are doing very well. Warranty, for example, 20% higher in today's session as well. Two days in a row, warranty has done very well. Uh, a fairly good numbers that the company showed, uh, even adjusted. So that one has done exceptionally well. Carol Info. Well, the news about the work hard deal and that is having a bit of an impact on this one as well. I uh, don't know whether there's a direct impact or no. That well it remains to be seen, but it's up close to 20% in trade. So good going. for uh carol info as well that aside not too many moves really on the upside for the small cap stocks but the mid cap stocks orchid chemicals is down close to 6% uh, kfa is down close to 5% in trade today so not good going for that and of course hindustan dot oliver in addition to ivrcl is down close to 6% as well so those are some individual stocks which have corrected quite a bit uh, in today's session cf interestingly is sub 100 now 5% lower for that one as well so that one is not doing too well either let's take a break uh, we come back uh, get you what the dealing rooms have to say about uh, today's session and some stock recommendations get in the closing trades from our experts and talk a little bit more about some of the mid caps and the small caps which are having some significant price movements in today's session in this moment Welcome back to Closing Trades. Uh, we are in conversation with uh, Ashwini Gujral, Sudarshan Sukhani, and and of course uh, we'll also be getting in Abhishek Agarwal, Director of Fortune Interfinance, who joins us right now on the show to speak about his sense of what the fundamentals of the market uh, look like. Uh, Abhishek, thanks so much for joining in today. What's your sense of uh, how how are trades shaping up, particularly in the infrastructure pocket, because uh, while just a few people were speaking about how there could be some bit of value buying coming in while the long term prospects remain under suspicion the stocks have corrected quite a bit in today's session as well i believe the factor remains the interest rate and mm. especially when the interest rate is so high and unexpectedly the rbi has increased to 50 bips i think that that would actually dampen their operating margins anyways they are facing a lot of crunch from the commodity prices and going forward when we are seeing that you know there is no spending as such happening in the government space you know so i believe that would continue for at least another quarter or two and because there is no sense of clarity in the market that's one of the reason why people don't want to have any sort of investment in the same sector so maybe one of the reasons why that kind of profit booking is seen in the sectors mm -hmm. Rajesh in this market what is it that you would completely avoid real estate for sure uh because just uh, not just it's rate sensitive but also too many regulatory issues right now uh, i would also uh, largely avoid uh, psu banks in this kind of a scenario because we feel npas will probably grow credit growth will probably not happen uh, uh, adequately Uh, so the, the share prices for most of the PSU stocks, we think, will PSU bank stocks will be under a lot of stress. Uh, so these two come to my mind immediately. Hmm. Rajesh, just before we thank you, uh, just wondering, you know, everybody is talking about this private sector banks and how well they have done visa with the PSU banks. You you do not believe that all of this is right. in the price because some of the private sector banks trading at three and a half, four times book. versus a couple of psu banks if not all trading at sub 1.5 even 1.25 you don't believe all of this is in the price well see uh, private banks have traditionally uh, been priced at a higher uh, level compared to psu banks uh, so to some extent what you are saying uh, uh, could hold true however uh, you know the, the way we are seeing is that if you look at the way nims work if you have an ability to price yourself higher by even 25 bips or so 
uh, on uh, the hires on the, the loans, it more than mitigates uh, the additional cost that you have from the cost of funds, uh, uh, you know, the high rise in cost of funds due to higher interest rates. So, and private banks are much better place to do that currently. And uh, also their whole uh, management in terms of, uh, you know, NPAs have been much better and, and uh, their credit growth is expected to be significantly better. You know, in fact, we don't expect uh, there to be very significant credit growth uh, dip as far as private banks are concerned. So it looks much better uh, compared to PSU banks. Uh, so, so uh, you know, there is still a fair bit of potential upside left in private banks in the next one year or so. All right, Rajesh, we leave it at that. Thanks very much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon with Thank your you. perspective uh, on the markets. Uh, let's quickly go across. Uh, just about 10 minutes to go before we wrap up the session. Dealers say then with uh, Yatin and Darshan who join us right now. In fact, Abhishek will be joining us in just a bit to, to also give us... Uh, a roundup of what their sources are informing them in the dying minutes of trade. Yeah, let's start off with you. What are your sources telling you? Well, then we in the morning uh, dealing room check. We had mentioned uh, fertilizer stocks, uh, especially RCF and uh, Chumbal fertilizer, who are into the urea space now. On the, on the fifth, there is a EGOM meeting for deregulation of urea, and that is why you are seeing some bit of buying coming in uh, the urea plays like RCF and Chumbal fertilizers. And dealers are expecting further five to ten percent upside from current levels.